Hi, my name is Samuel James Price. Here on the Crypto Lifer Show, every Wednesday night, we bring you The Price Report, where we interview an interesting person from somewhere in cryptocurrency, whether they're an analyst, a dev, or someone that just has great ideas about crypto and wants to move forward with the space. This person I've been on ATB with a few times. I've been loving to get him on the show. I finally did. He's busy like me, so for us to finally get together, it's awesome. He's great with the charts. He's dedicated to his community, and, you know, he's one of the greatest people, I think, on his way up and the YouTube world, so I'd love to have him on. Evan Eldo, man, take it away. Thank you so much for coming on in. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited. Been looking forward to this. Super excited. Yeah, how's your day, man? The first thing I want to ask is how you're doing, how you feeling, and uh, how's everything going for you and your life today? Yeah, it's great. You know, love and life in Miami, Florida. Couldn't be more grateful. One of the greatest cities. So I am definitely very blessed. It's always great to be grateful for, you know, all the success that all of us have had. So I think gratitude is one of the most important things to try to be grateful every day. Amen, man. Amen. I love that. That's uh, hey, that's the key to the frequency that brings in abundance. I learned that 100%. myself. And every night I go to bed in gratitude, I wake up. It's almost like there's a package outside my door. And I have more abundance coming in, in, into my life. And uh, it really is the frequency that grows. So with that being said, um, let's talk about growth, right? And the one thing I want to talk about is Coinbase growth, right? They've had some issues, right? They've been served the Wells right. notice. They've been fighting really hard, going to kind of against the grain. Uh, they've opened up a new derivatives exchange in Bermuda, right? And so, right. you know, they've had to go offshore a little bit. Uh, what do you think about Coinbase kind of battling with the SEC uh, do you think they're going to get anywhere? Do you think we'll have a change of guard with Gary Gensler? Just what are your thoughts following this? And uh, maybe you have a chart or two, too, to show about Coinbase. I don't know. You always seem to whip out something, and uh, yeah. I really appreciate it. So I like to look at kind of the fundamentals through the view of the charts or vice versa, of kind of, vice versa kind of. What I will say on the fundamentals here is that it's tough to kind of go fighting against kind of the SEC. Coinbase has had some good luck to a certain extent, so far to open this other derivatives exchange where you have you know less people are probably getting there's probably less new traders we're looking at you know altcoins continuing to bleed against bitcoin and i'm not saying all the people who um you know leverage trade or are degenerates or whatever or the more risky type but definitely it attracts those people to get in there so i think in the long term it may be a good thing for coinbase in the short term especially if you look at you know Bitcoin, all coins, including ETH, to keep bleeding against Bitcoin. Fun fact, I mean, ETH has bled against Bitcoin 25% since last September. we got to keep those things in mind. It seems like, let me show you my chart right here, right now. It seems like that um, we probably, you got Market Cipher, if you guys know Market Cipher, Blood Diamond right here, not always right. This confirms in two days. It seems like you would at least make some type of double bottom pattern here into the summer. A lot of people think there's going to be a summer lull, sell and may walk away type thing. The charts would say that. Obviously, they're not always right. I could see this potential bottom. If you go into a bad recession, things with that lawsuit don't go up you know don't go too well not too many people are signing up into derivatives i could see you going all the way kind of potentially to these areas that's the you know signature buy opportunity and i think you know if you look at um historically what typically happens obviously 2019 into early 2020 was a double bottom pattern for bitcoin you could kind of see you know history rhyming or at least repeating to a certain extent with bitcoin with coinbase we all know coinbase follows bitcoin we could see that you know lower low potentially for not saying bitcoin's gonna make a lower low but who knows it's possible to come to some low levels again into the end of the year into early next year for a pristine buying opportunity very good buying opportunity yeah, i also see too there could be a right shoulder there there's a chance too one thing i've yeah. noticed too is you know you get banks collapsing bitcoin goes up all coins don't go up as much then Bitcoin takes 100%. the tump, and then they go down with Bitcoin. So, like, because they don't sustain yeah. that growth, because the money's not flowing in, just like you showed, you know, and uh, you talked about with Ethereum bleeding. Uh, when you see the Ethereum bleeding, and you can tell, there's only been a collection of, of charts like Casper, Caspa, uh, Zen Token. There's been, like, a handful of, like, 20 to maybe 30 coins that have just been actually on their own bull run, just absolutely ripping. Yeah. But for the most part, you know, 90% of all coins are suffering, right? They're not able to, because it's not a fixed amount right it's doesn't they we don't know their actual supply right 
people that have big money institutions, people that want to throw like, you know, I remember uh, Robert Kiyosaki. I think he threw six. I mean, we were talking, I think we might've been on the same show, but he, he bought like, mm-hmm. I say 6,000 Bitcoins at $6,000, right? I think that's about $36 million worth of Bitcoin might even be. Wow. So, <laughs> you know, people aren't going to go buy $36 million worth of Ethereum. They're not going to buy $36 million worth of some little coin that may have or may not have some potential. They've already made yeah. the wealth. They want to keep that wealth, right? And Bitcoin has shown that. It's funny, I was going over a chart today. It was less than a penny, man. It was just like these coins that we see now. Uh, there is a coin right now that's less than a penny that we could see skyrocket to, you know, 50, 60 bucks. You know, do that 1,000x gain. Again, everyone, 100%. that's not overnight. That could happen in four years, even into the next cycle. Like Matic. You bought Matic in 2019 when it first IEO'd and got in at the beginning. It was less than, it was like a penny, less than a penny or around a penny. Yep. And you would have to have held it. I used to go, you know, I talked to Crypto Love a lot, and he was saying, everyone wants to make this big money. They want 100x. They want a, a 1,000x. And he said, you know, I've 100x a few times. And every time it's taken between 18 and 36 months. Like, it's not some, or eight, a year and a half, and, and yeah, 18 or 36 months. It doesn't, it doesn't happen overnight. It's not like, you know, everyone wants this quick, fast meme money, which you can get here and there. Um, what's yeah. your take on the memes? You know, I did buy some Pepe. And uh-huh. people look at me funny because I'm like a macro trader. Like I got into Canopy Grow Corp. I got into, you know, gold and silver stocks and started trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange and looking at me like, and I'm a blue chip guy. But I always say, once you make a, once you've made over a few hundred grand or more in blue chips, then fine. You can throw 500 to a couple thousand bucks in a meme, right? You've earned the right. But I always say to someone like, don't take your last, you know, not financial advice, but don't take your last 500 right. bucks and toss it in something that could easily get rug pulled or disappear in a second. What's your take on memes? I've never asked you about Pepe. Pepe's running right now. We might as well throw that into the trend. What's uh-huh. your take on Pepe? Did you buy Pepe? Do you think I'm funny for buying Pepe? And just, you know, I don't, I, whatever you say, I, I just love to hear your comments. So, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of meme coins. They're fun to do TA on, on sometimes. I mean, Pepe, I pronounce it Peppy. I don't know. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I was a Paul Bear. We all pronounce it Peppy. It's a kind of, that, that kind of inside thing there, but you know, I think the meme coins, they're fun to chase. I mean, usually after the first peak, they always get that little last like jump up. It's pretty obvious the time to sell them where you won't, wouldn't be selling it usually at the exact top, but you're usually close. I remember this with Doge or Shiba as well. Um, if it's like that, everybody, you just look at Twitter, everybody's posting about it on Twitter. That's usually the time to get out. Usually you don't get it out at the exact top, but it's usually in the grand scheme of things. You look back six months later, it's an amazing place to kind of get out. So the other thing too that I want to talk about in terms of like altcoins or higher risk things, obviously, you know, we talk about Bitcoin, Ethereum, th- those are blue chips. That's more like value investing, which value investing is kind of like you buy something and there's like a 90 something percent chance that it's going to be higher than it is now in five to 10 years. That's value investing. You could just, you know, park some money in Bitcoin. You could buy and wait. Venture capitalism is a little bit different. And that's what the altcoins are. Venture capitalism is where you may buy five of them or 10 of them that have really good fundamentals. And you know, out of those 10, you know, bad luck happens. Businesses fail all the time. There are businesses with incredible fundamentals that just have terrible luck sometimes. And they they fail, they don't do well. And, you know, I'm sure there's an alternate reality where Matic maybe didn't jump up as much as it did, and it mm. didn't become the big altcoin. So Obviously, you could look in hindsight and say, okay, if I bought a ton of Matic back then, I'd be a multimillionaire. But the safer way to do it would be five, buy five or 10 coins that had good fundamentals similar to Matic. You would know out of those, you know, five or 10, maybe three would go to zero, four would be sideways at the same price now, and two or three would be between 100 to 1,000 X. That's the best kind of strategy, I think, which is the venture capitalism strategy that nobody really talks about. You want to kind of hedge your bets. It's kind of the, you know, the same thing. It's venture cap. That's the difference between venture capitalism and value investing. You know, you need to know how to head your bets there and you need to know probability. It's interesting you say that because you kind of mapped out my life in a little bit. You know, I got into uh, a, a silver stock. Mm-hmm. I rolled that into Canopy Grow Corp. I rolled that into Bitcoin. And then once I got to a certain place, I realized I was like somewhat good at speculating. Like, okay, the weed industry was going to be big. Which one should I buy, right? So I'm always speculating, and I found out that's, you know, I I actually came to terms with what I am as an investor. Like, I'm a long-term Bitcoin holder. I like to get into traditional markets and, like you say, get myself into a staple, value invest. But then I I go by the rule of thirds. I'll keep 30% in 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 Bitcoin. The other 30% I may split into, like, maybe lower-risk assets, like somewhere between a Mm billion-dollar market cap and a billion and a half. They could go to 10. I'm just trying to 10x them. And then the last 30%, I'm going to split into threes, 
and go into high risk, high, high risk, and just absolutely absurd risk, right? But that way, because right. most of my money is parked where I need it to be, it's okay. Like I recently, I'll, I'll let you in on what I've done recently is I recently did a, uh, an AI portfolio, right? And I, you know, I, I already ha- hold, held some GRT. So I was like, I got that one. I obviously put a big, a good amount of money into AGIX. My AGIX is my biggest holding in that portfolio at this time. So I threw, cause I, everyone knows it singularity.net. I figured it's a shoe in. If AI goes well, that's just going to be the one that's going to be talked about the most good 10 to 20 X on my investment move on.com. Yeah. Like it's going to work out. But then I, sp- I went in and I got a little risky and I put like a thousand to 1500 bucks in 7 million market cap. One was called Cambria and I won't go down the list cause I'm not trying to shill, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, and I just threw down things that are just very, very low uh, market caps because I've done this before. Like I threw some money into safe moon, 2,500 bucks turned into 285 grand. So I said, Hey, if it can happen, you never know. You know what I mean? But also I always yeah. tell people, you kind of have to earn your right. Like if you've never made any money trading. It, it, like there's a level to doing it, you know, and you're right. Four of those coins, five of these, my, 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 five of those coins may go to absolute zero. Right. And just actually just dip off completely. But yeah. if two or three of them make a payday of 20 to 30 to 50 X, you know, I've also 50 X like five times in my life. You know, I've 30 X over 10 times. So like you uh-huh. get accustomed to believing, Hey, I could do this again. You know, I'll even look at my wife sometimes and I'm like, babe, like, how am I going to do it this time? I don't know the coins. And she's like, I don't know how you do it, honey, but you'll find the coins. You know, this is what you do for a living. Like, you know, um, I love the charts too. You can always use charts to kind of get yourself out of the emotional state and just kind of see what's happening. But on these low cap gems, it really is a buy and hold situation. See what happens in the next big bull run and uh, see where it can take. What's the riskiest move you've ever made? If you could share with us, do you think, uh, or where, where will you go into that level if you haven't gone there first? Like, What's something that you consider like a little off, but you actually may consider or that may intrigue you? A little oh, bit? yeah, I got it quite a bit. So my kind of view on like Bitcoin ETH is that ETH will continue to bleed against Bitcoin potentially into the end of the year. I love you. Now, <laughs> I'm just what's that? I love you. <laughs> I'm but, just, yeah. but, but, but having said, I know it irritates yeah. some people, but having said that, I may take, this is where the silver lining is. I may take almost all, if not all of my Bitcoin, if we get to really low ETH Bitcoin evaluations, almost all of my Bitcoin, if not all of it, and convert it into Ethereum, especially if ETH ends up making a lower low than it already has. I don't know if it will. A lot of people say 100% that won't happen. I don't know. I think with regulatory FUD, with you know, potential recession, it is possible ETH can make a lower low into the end of the year. Some people call me crazy. Some people agree. If that does happen, that could be one of those because we all know that Bitcoin at the market cap that it's at, like you're going to make money with it in the next three to five years. We know that 90 something percent chance, very high. But to get that 10x or that potential 20x that we saw last time, that's going to be tough. And you need stuff that's smaller market cap than that. You're going to need something like ETH. And I think that ETH, I don't know if it'll go the 20x, um, but I mean, if you're looking at ETH at like 6,000 to 10,000, making it a new all time high, and it goes down to say 800 or 900 or those areas, that's the place where you could get that potential huge gain. Um, also some of the altcoins, if we do have Bitcoin dominance reach like 55, maybe even 60% a stretch, I don't think it would get that high, but 55%. I, there's a lot of altcoins that I may be putting, you know, some big positions in Adam. I like, this is the venture capitalism thing I talked about Buy five to 10 of them with pretty small, you know, five to 10 of them altcoins in the top 100. That's what I'm looking at. And then maybe a few, obviously the real micro caps like those, I'm more of like a top 100 type guy because I'm so focused on like the TA. I don't have the time to really look at the fundamentals for a lot of these really mar- micro caps, but to buy like, a lot of the ones in the top 100 bet, vet them out by 10 to 20 of them, put nice positions in all of them. You may have some 100 X's, at least a few like 30 X's, things like that. That combined with a nice position in Ethereum, you might be able to get an overall portfolio going up 30 X, maybe 20 X, you know, mm-hmm. good. We, we all know, let's be real, there's diminishing returns in each bull run. It's going to be tougher as more people kind of get in. Diminished returns means that you know, your risk reward ratio goes down. You're going to lose probably less money, at least with the, the larger market caps. You probably, I'm still, people are going to find ways to lose a ton of money oh, with yeah. the more, you know, Ponzi schemes, scams, all that, unless regulation really comes in into the end of the year and kind of cleans those out. But even then there's probably going to be, you know, more, a lot of tokens still going to zero. We know that, but 
The main thing I would say, the riskiest thing I would say is towards the end of the year, if ETH bleed, continues to bleed against Bitcoin, really goes down converting almost all my Bitcoin into ETH and just hoping for that 10 to 20 X potentially. That's a great, uh, that's really good insight. I appreciate that. See, I'm going to, I'm a little uh, adverse to that just because I bought Bitcoin so low and I don't want to pay a tax. Like if once I flip right. that to ETH, I'm going to pay a severe tax. And so like, yeah. I'm, I'm banking on the idea that my, I can keep my Bitcoin holdings get up to a, a substantial amount of Bitcoin, right? I buy like a couple thousand dollars of it every other few days, whenever there's a nasty, like right. yesterday in that dip, I went and just grabbed a couple. And I I do it on the live stream a lot. Like you'll see me, I'll just be like, I'm grabbing it here right now. And uh, I make a lot of buys on the live. I build bags on the live. Like, I'll, like today I wow. was adding to Casper on my live stream, CASPR. I was adding to, uh, what other coin? I was just adding, I was adding to some other coins too. You know, and I say, hey, this is a good place for me. Oh, yeah, Caspa, I was adding to today on the live stream too, as well. So it's, uh, that's why it's cool. You know, you can, I try to be as transparent as I can. There's way more going on in my trading group, but you know, because it's just, I'm doing a lot. So right. you can't, there's no way you could see it all on the live. But I like what you're saying. I like the insight here. Uh, I do believe what you're saying is correct for me, just for where I bought Bitcoin. I don't, I, I, I it's a little adverse. What I'm banking on right. is this that, I'll hold a substantial amount of Bitcoin and I'll be able to use it as collateral five, seven years from now, you know, say, Hey, I have this amount of Bitcoin. Bitcoin's at, you know, half a million to, you know, whoever, maybe 300 grand, 200 grand, wherever maybe. it may be. Right. And, and they'll look, Oh, this guy's sitting on three mil, 10 mil, 20 mil, whatever it is. And then they'll say, well, he made a smart decision already, right? He beat inflation and there'll be right. some bank that will let you park a smart contract of your holdings and let, and lend you maybe a stable coin where you can then go buy real estate with, right? Watch the real estate appreciate over time and then unlock your Bitcoin back on out. Never have to sell the Bitcoin, not one bit. Um, another guy was telling me the other day, uh, back to Coinbase, right? Uh, number one, I'm going to ask you two questions here. Uh, one is, would you buy Coinbase stock, right? You know, is that something you'd ever consider? Or sounds like, I don't think you would. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested because I don't know the answer. And number yeah. two, uh, what this gentleman was telling me is he's, he parks his money in Coinbase, but Coinbase will give you a loan. And you can take a loan out on, you know, and he took, so he took like 30 grand loan out against his crypto on Coinbase. That's not a taxable event. So he got cash liquid and he didn't have to pay taxes on it. I thought that was pretty smart, pretty ingenious. Would you ever consider doing something like that? And would you ever buy Coinbase stock? Is that something that you've ever thought about? Yeah, so Coinbase stock right now, based on what I'm looking at, is a little bit too risky. I'd rather buy Bitcoin itself mm -hmm. right now at the moment. It follows Bitcoin. Coinbase, I believe, is a bit of a more volatile version of Bitcoin. I know some people that bought Coinbase at the IPO. They are completely wrecked. They would have been so much better off just buying Bitcoin and <laughs> learning. They were mainly people that were older. They didn't really know how to use hardware wallets or that. Figured it would be easier just to buy Coinbase. Right now, I wouldn't, but into the towards the end of the year, if it looks like the S&P 500 is kind of bottoming out, if we take a big hit with that, if we take a big hit with the NASDAQ end a year, early next year, I think the place would be really good to get into Coinbase. I, I think we shouldn't overcomplicate it too much. You know, it kind of defeats the purpose of Bitcoin, uh, you know, being your own bank, those type of things to invest in Coinbase stock. But, you know, I think if you're going to be, if you're into crypto, if you're trying to invest in crypto, I think the best thing would be be your own bank, learn how to use a hardware wallet, those type of things with Bitcoin, then maybe sprinkle a little bit into Coinbase or some other, you know, ventures that you like. Um, as well forget what was the second question you, you asked <laughs> yeah just um you know it was uh you know would you buy coin would you ever like borrow money against any of your, oh yeah uh, you know we yeah. ever borrow money against uh your bitcoin holdings you know you may not coinbase or anywhere is that something that ever intrigues you so you can take profit without selling you know and uh or yeah. is that too risky for you again um you know just just an interesting so, question you do have to deal with, I've done it before on Celsius back in um a while ago and you got to be careful because you know Celsius I still actually have a loan that I borrowed against, I think I borrowed against half of a Bitcoin on there. Oh man, back in when Bitcoin was at like 30K or something before Celsius went down and it's still trapped on there. But the what I borrowed against it with is actually probably worth now, maybe not, but it was actually worth more than the Bitcoin. So it kind of worked out for me. You got to be careful with margin calls. You got to be careful with that type of stuff. If you really know what you're doing, you can do that. But you know, that's like if you're really, really wealthy and you kind of where it's advantageous enough to avoid the taxes there. But you got to be certain that, you know, I don't know if we're really there yet with Bitcoin, even with the volatility that it is. 
if you're going to do it now, maybe the time, but it's not impossible. I know margin calls, be careful with that. It's not impossible for you to go down to, you know, 12K, 13K. Michael Saylor, Michael Saylor has done it. It's worked out so well. It's worked out well so far, but he's had a post collateral a few times. So you got to be prepared. You know, anything can happen. And it's more about kind of a risk, you know, type thing. That's, that's basically essentially using leverage. It's a low leverage type thing, but it is using leverage. And you got to be prepared to, hit those margin calls and hit those things. Now, depends what state you're in too or how much you're being taxed at. If you're in California versus Florida, there's a pretty big difference in mm. capital gains taxes. It may be something you should research out there, but if you're in Florida, it may be not as advantageous. You know, what some people, what I would say too is like, you gotta look at like how many people, you know, in terms of taxes, a lot of people lose money. And if you're able to kind of make money in this game, it shouldn't be the worst thing in the world to pay taxes unless you're in a state or a place in the world that you're just taxed insane at. If you're in a place like Florida, it's not that bad. Massachusetts. Yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad yet. So you got to really look into it. I did it a few times. It was, you know, you could also do what, what people are doing with um, kind of not yield farming, but the sense where you borrow against the Bitcoin and then your, your interest rate is lower and then you could put that money in a money market or something and earn interest on it. You know, there's things like that, some arbitrage, you know, things you can do. Um, people do it also to buy more Bitcoin. If you're going to do that, it is risky. Be careful with the margin call. But if you're going to do that, do it when Bitcoin's down, I would say. Do it when it's down a lot. I 30K may be hard, high, a little bit of a high number to do that at. And that, that brings me to a video I've been working on. We put out a few weeks ago that we were working on as a team in, in my department. At, you know my at my uh, my company and we made a whole video about liquid staking. We wanted people to understand a lot about Lido Dow, Rocket Pool, what was going on there, and kind of the mm -hmm. leaders of liquid staking, right? And that brings me to zk rollups, right? Because they kind of had a, some of the liquid staking protocols also had rollups involved. And when I'm researching, you know, rollups, think about it. They send all transactions to the rollup, and then the rollup has to run on some type of uh, tech, and you know they have to have a backup there. And so what it's doing is it's taking some of the actual transactions off of the decentralized idea of the coin and mm -hmm. kind of stuffing them all into a centered area of where there could be a, you know, a, a fall, like a, a fall, fall safe right there. It's like it, it could be a place where more transactions actually get ruined due to one uh, situational hazard. Right. Uh, what's your take on on ZK rollups? Uh, the article we have here that we're going over is rollups aren't that decentralized. Does anybody care if you want to read this on Blockworks? It just has a few points about kind of what I said. And the crux of that idea is that, you know, we're putting so many transactions off chain. Uh, what happens from an exploit? It's also super new. We really haven't been able to run its course, you know, with all in, in a vast form with everyone else kind of going in and out. You seem to have some, uh, some, some good background on DeFi there. What's your take on it? And would you ever jump into a liquid staking protocol like Lido Dow or Rocket Pool and have you in the past? So I've messed around with it a little bit back in the rally up um, of summer of 2021 when we went back into the bull run. I think in this environment, those new things, and I think the, the criticisms of it are very, very valid, not being that decentralized. There's always going to be risk with that. Right now, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't mess with it just because Bitcoin dominance keeps going up. All coins keep leading against Bitcoin. We're on the verge of a potential recession. The Fed is still hiking rates. They hiked them 25 basis points today. I don't think it's worth the risk right now. However, maybe in six months, if we come down a bit more with all coin evaluations, it looks like Bitcoin dominance is kind of peaking. It looks like alts may be fully, you know, bottomed against Bitcoin. That's the place to get into those more, you know, risky venture capitalism type things where it's risky. You know, you got to be careful with it, but you could get, you know, big, some of those yield pools, you could get huge, huge gains with. Um, so it's something to look into then right now in this environment i mean it could you could have something that's the greatest idea in the world but that doesn't mean that the recession can't knock it down that doesn't mean regulatory fud can't you know delay it in preventing it from doing well so right now i think it's just not worth the risk i think bitcoin is the best bet right now and then look more into those more risk things towards the end of the year or early next year based on my analysis could be wrong not always right 100 of the time but just based on the way i'm doing it i'm waiting for stuff like that you know, what we have a one up on is, you know, anyone can do FA. Like a lot of people are like, I don't do TA, I do FA. And I'm like, I do FA all day mm -hmm. long. And but then I also know when to get in. Like I did my FA on Bitcoin and I was able to get in at close to the bottom for 19K and around 16 and 17. I also bought 3,001. I bought 3,800. I bought the bottom 
three times just using literally the fear and greed index, stochastics, mm. RSI, RSI on like a two week to a three week chart. You know what I mean? And like, I mean, you're not going to exact me and you, we're not going to say we're hundred percent, but I've yeah. been able to spot on the area where as a trader, my indicators are telling me, if you don't take advantage of this high probability situation, you're likely going to kick yourself. And you're probably like me, you back test, you back test you, when you first find that aha moment and you're like, Oh yeah, like that's it. You don't always pull the trigger, right? And then you see, man, I should have pulled the trigger there. Like, that should have. So the next time it comes around, you do pull the trigger, right? It's something you snatch it up, you grab it. Then the next time it comes around. Then after three times of pulling the trigger, the fourth time comes around, it's a lot easier to believe in your analysis. Like, that's why no matter how good of a trader is, it's time in the market really progresses uh, your ability to become successful because you have a broader span of data to be able to hit those probabilities, right? You can right. actually see the math in front of you. I love talking to you because I can see your mind working and it's really cool to see, like you already gave me a great idea and you know, something I was already thinking about, but it's, yeah, we're going to watch this ETH BTC chart, right? When we both get our right. indicators and I'll probably, maybe we should hit each other up and see what you say. I'll be checking on your channel because if you do as much work as you do, and I respect your hustle and what you're doing with the charts, we're going to probably come to a pretty close realization. We may not always be on the same page at the right. exact week or two, but I bet in a month's time, like we're both going to be like, Hey, like, you know, I got money flow. I got, you know, I got, like, I got one wave, right? I, I did market set for a while. I got a wave with a shorter wave. I'm looking at the idea that ETH is bottoming here. And that will be a great time to go into rocket pool or to do some liquid staking, right? Because yeah. again, if you want to, you know, I, I don't, I personally don't do a lot of margin. I've never really taken margin. I grew up like Irish working background, like never borrow money. <laughs> you know, my dad barely used yeah. credit cards until he got older. You know, like he always had a lot of cash on him. And, like he made his money. So it's, uh, when it comes down to me, I don't like to take those risks. You know what I mean? If I'm going to take a risk, I'll take a risk on my research of an emerging technology, you know? And I also research billionaires. Like, I, I, I would love to be, you know, I, I destined myself. I think I believe you, you're probably going to become a billionaire in your life if that's what you want to do. I could become a billionaire in my life if that's what I want to do, not to, you know, to be pompous. I just think it's, it's, it's an yeah. actual attainable goal. It's not as unattainable as everyone thinks. And if that's 100%. how you're going to do it, I research billionaires all the time, right? Jim Rickards, I want to research, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reading about Warren Buffett. I'm watching all these different mm -hmm. people, even some other people that uh, my dad put across my radar that were in like the Wall Street Journal years ago. One guy did some eye thing and next thing you know, he didn't even never thought he, people became billionaires that never even really thought it was somewhat possible, but they just kept rolling investments and rolling investments. And next thing you know, on paper, bam, they, they're sitting on million, billion dollars worth of assets. And how you do that and how I've researched it, and, and this is why like, I dabble with leverage trading a little bit only to teach people how to do it right. 1% of your portfolio, always use a stop loss. 100%, Don't be a degen. Yeah. Stop dreaming. You know, I'd much rather someone DCA, you know, and again, not financial advice, but I'd much rather see someone DCA into Bitcoin. Like if you're a waiter and you're trying to get out of that position, or if you're in a cer certain place in life and you want to move up in the world, I'd much rather see that person DCA into Bitcoin, hold a real asset, than try to wing it on, you know, on a, on a, on a, on a crazy leverage trade. You know what I mean? It may happen for someone, yeah. but it's like one out of the few percentage that actually wins that race. And so when I think yeah. about that, I was like, well, how do you become a billionaire then? And I researched billionaires and almost what I can find about billionaires that, that I see a common reality with is that they invested, they, they, they took the risk. They did heavy research. They had a lot of foresight into where we were going to go in the future. Right. And mm -hmm. that's risk because everyone else around you doesn't understand, but you see something and you don't really have a leg, like a, a shoulder to, Hey, Evan, what do you think about the fact that they're going to start flying planes on corn oil? And you might just look at me like, but if I believe in that and my research is sound, right. then I may, I may invest in, in, in corn ethanol or I may, you know what I mean? I may do something like that. I did that in the past. That one is one that didn't work out. So I bring it up, but it's funny. <laughs> oh, it, yeah. But it's funny. But the idea behind that is, uh, you keep, uh, you know, you keep going after, you basically do deep research in emerging technologies. That's how I see people became a billionaire. Like, you know, they put, you know, maybe a quarter million dollars into something when no one was paying attention. That turned into like, a, you know, a, a billion. Or they put a quarter, uh, you know, 250 grand turned into maybe 10 or 20 bill, uh, 20, 10 million. Then they did it again with like 5 million, yeah. turned into 20, 30. And then they, and they just kept rolling these ideas uh, into emerging technologies with heavy research. So like, I believe that's the key. Like, I never read about a leverage trade, a billionaire who leverage traded his way to a billion dollars. Like, I don't, you maybe you know someone, I, I haven't seen it. It's very rare, right? So, whenever I yeah. see someone like join my trading group or, you know, get into what you're doing and they're like, I'm going to leverage trade, I always say, like, well, let's research the richest people in the world and re let's research how wealth was built. And I'm telling you right now, like, 
I, and again, I don't want to harp on people that leverage trade because every time I do this, someone thinks I'm, I'm not putting it down. Like, I, I think anyone could do anything with any tool in their life. I really, truly believe that right. 100%. I'm just saying in my research, I haven't seen anyone become a billionaire, uh, you know, degenning their way 100x to 50x. You know, I just haven't seen it. So you wouldn't uh, get your orders filled at that point. You'd start to get diminished returns even <laughs> if you could get that high. If your orders would be if your exchanges wouldn't take your orders because you'd have to leverage, you'd have to be too much money in the exchange. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's why you yeah. have to slip in on the low and like and just kind of watch things uh move to the yeah. upside. You know what I mean? And so it's funny. I mean, that's interesting. Uh, I love your take, man. Uh, it's like, I, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Like I love, I love watching you grow. Like I see someone Thank in you. my eyes that's going to be ext- already, I already consider you an, an amazing success, but, uh, you're a great example for young, you know, you're, you're in your mid twenties on your way up. Yep. You're a great example for young, young men and women that want to change their lives, go after their dreams. Anyone that starts a YouTube channel, number one, you've kicked, you've kicked fear in the face. You say, you know what? I don't care what people think of me. I don't care how I look on camera today. Cause sometimes you wake up, right? And you're just like, you press the record button anyway. You make your content. You believe in your content. Your passion pushes you through all those thoughts of doubt. And you're going you're gonna to just continue to grow, man. So that's why I'm blessed. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's like super nice that you would take your time. Yeah, out it's an honor, to be man. Thank you so much. Great, great, great conversation. Thank you so much. One last thing I want to talk about is, you know, and I'm not going to get too political here because it does kind of go down the rabbit hole. But I want to discuss, you know, CBDCs, you know, and it, and it brings up this, uh, you know, a Zero Hedge article with Ron DeSantis. He's going to ban CBDCs. Is this is this a virtue signal? Is he really going to be able to pull this off? Uh, what happens if the if you know he ha- he actually can't take maybe a federal grant or something happens? Where do you see this going? You also living in Miami. This is kind of like a really you know close concept that's going to affect your life. Uh, and you know you don't have to pick a political side at all. That's not what I'm trying to do. But I just want to see you know what your take on this is. Like, will he be able to get away with that? What is his true plans? And um. You know, are, are, you know, are you as adverse to a CBDC? It's like someone like me. I want to decentralize. I know they're going to, they could just take your money away in two seconds. And what mm-hmm. we've seen around the world, it definitely has already happened. So I, every time you give government more power, uh, it can constrain the people no matter what. And also, you know, lead to that, you know, tyrannical behavior, right? By uh, the people, that, that, the powers that be. Yeah, it's 100%. Like, it's, it's, it's tough to kind of say what's going to happen with the CBDCs. And like, I mean, as you said, too, like, obviously, the Santas, you know, would have some power as far as a big state if he tries to ban it. But the Fed, at the end of the day, if the Fed really wants to do something, they could, you know, stop funding, they could find their way around it. I don't think, you know, it depends on, you know, the view, the way the country goes, it could take years for us to play out. And at the end of the day, it kind of depends, like, how worried you kind of want to be about it. Because if you're really worried about that, you know, the move would be to go to like El Salvador or somewhere with less resources where they can't really go after you. There's pros and cons to that. I mean, that's something on an individual basis that you got to think about. You might your um, own armed guards at that point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, so it's, it's kind of, you know, depends how paranoid you want to be, depending. Um, you can research it, you know, make an educated guess. We don't know exactly what's going to happen with that. I'm kind of more on the positive side of that. I think the only way that would really get implemented quickly is let's say AI gets really, really big and a lot of jobs are automated away. We go into like a bad recession where you're at the cusp of, of a depression. People are talking about, you know, things get bad. People are talking about like universal basic income. That's where once you get down that road, that's where it gets dicey because it's like, yeah, we're going to give you this check every month, but you got to buy the things we want you to buy. You know, you want you know, you want to buy that craft fed steak? No, you know what I mean? That's where it kind of gets dicey. Eat bugs and be happen. happy, right? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> well, nothing and be happy. I mean, yeah. That's where it could go down. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, what, you know, what happens if DeSantis runs for president. You know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm not going to make any predictions right now. But, you know, I have a feeling things are going to get, you know, the media wants that attention. They want that rating. You know, things are going to get interesting, especially if we go into a recession, especially if unemployment rates kind of rise. And I think there's going to be more and more talks of CBDCs. It seems like, you know, theoretically, when a a tragedy happens, something like, you know, the pandemic, we go into a bad recession, what typically happens and what typically happens at the end of empires as empires go over time, it seems like kind of the liberties are just gradually taken away. The Fed, Fed gets more power. And what always happens, I think I've heard you talk about this. I mean, inflation just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And if you look at that pattern, it would kind of tell you there were eventually will be a CBDC. 
just, you know, in the course of like printing more money, give it, you know what I mean? And that's where it kind of all eventually falls apart. I hope things don't get too ugly. I don't think they will. Maybe in this modern time with all the technology, we'll be all right. At the end of the day, if you're somebody who's prepared, you're prepared, you know, you have your own. It seems like the people with money, with wealth, always kind of are able to avoid the tragedies. So you could either, you know, act like a victim, say you didn't, you know, oh, it was me. Or you could try to prepare, you know, the best way you can to try to prepare for that. That's what I'll say. This is a breath of fresh air. Number one, as I'm getting older, just turned 40, my 40th birthday, I can't believe it. I feel like I'm 26, man. I don't feel that old, you know, and I try yeah, not to look that old, but I do my best, you know, working out and drinking water. But it's just a breath of fresh air to see someone of your age sound so knowledgeable uh, and actually have a clear, calm, collective way to look at where we're going and make a really, you know, a, you know, a, a basic educated decision not using emotions, you know, you don't seem to be easily led down the rabbit hole. You find your own rabbit holes. And, uh, yeah, uh, with that, I just, one last question that we didn't have planned today that I have to ask you is like, you sound like an avid reader or someone that's obtained a good amount of information. And it, to me, you either read, you know, constantly or you're reading online. Is there a book maybe you want to tell anyone that you've grabbed and, and it might, it could be off of finance. It doesn't have to be anything, but just you just sound like someone that is super knowledgeable and maybe you could just tell us like a book that changed the way you thought oh, um, man, or yeah. if there's something that you, you know, you, you keep close to your heart or something that you remember, Hey man, well, after I read this book, it really helped me form in, an independent way to think because man, I'm so happy to talk to you. This is like, this is really awesome. Cool, man. Yeah. You know what comes to mind? So I I've read a lot of like, I listen to a lot of audio books. I have a bad neck. I can't even look down at a book for too long. It just gets sore. So I listen to like a lot of audio books. I'm working out and stuff. So one that I really like the most, and this one's probably better to even listen to as an audio book. I think, yeah. Um, outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill. Fun fact, like this book, he, um, I think he had it published after he died because there's nothing that like in today's world, I guess people were more religious back then, but in today's world, you wouldn't find anything really controversial. No one would really be offended. The average person would not be offended by anything in it, but it, it's interesting because it's an interview of like a reporter interviewing the devil and the devil saying all the things that he, you know, messes pe you know, in one of the things that the, the, they say, it like kind of screws people over kind of is, the fear of poverty that prevents people from doing what they really want to do. I think that's a really great book. Some people even, I would say that's better than the think and grow rich book. Um, that's one that really comes to mind. One that probably like, I could tell you, you know, rich dad, poor dad, everybody already knows yeah, about yeah. that. It's a good book, but a book that I've read that a lot of people don't know about outwitting the devil by Napoleon Hill. Really good book. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause uh, I remember I was started reading, I love to take baths, right? Um, haven't been taking as much yeah. anymore. My last last place I lived had this like giant bathtub, and I'm always about like once a week. I like to light a candle. I like to get like you know a bath pillow, and I like to soak, you know, in like a bubbly tub. And I always read a book, you know, for an hour or two. And that's when I started reading Thinking Grow Rich, right? And like his son was yeah. deaf, and despite his son's deaf, his you know his son actually became an amazing technician for like an yeah. ear company. Ended up making millions of dollars, and it didn't matter. And then he even said his son would never like talk, but he said, no, I'm going to work with him and I'm just going to keep talking to him and help his ears. And he's going to be able to figure it out. And it's it, there where there is a will, there's a way number one. And I, I didn't hear about this book yet. I should have. And so like you're, I'm running right now, I'm going to go get this audio book on Amazon and uh, I'm definitely want to start reading. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it's, you know, I found the key to success. I really did. And some people look at me like I'm pompous and this and that. And I really did. Like I realized one day, Every one of the actions that hurt me in life came from fear. Uh, if I yelled at someone that I didn't like is because I was insecure and I probably was using fear to behave emotionally, right? Um, if someone challenged me and I thought I had to like maybe push them away, well, why don't I just show my confidence and not have to push someone away? That was fear, you know? Um, you know, even like when people get into, uh, you know, even people get into like uh, relationship issues, like they're afraid that the woman's going to cheat on them or the woman's afraid the man's going to cheat on them. So then yeah. they eventually do cheat on the other person. You know what I mean? So they sabotage a relationship. And I realized that most of the things humans do, and we don't realize it because jealousy, we anger, but it all leads back to fear. Um, a lot of our negative emotions lead back to fear. And then I said, well, why, why what are we, what, what are we afraid of? And it's, we're living in the past or we're living in the future. And when you're not present, right, you'll get anxiety, right? Like, you know, my dad recently mm -hmm. passed away Monday night and I'm, you know, I could be in fear of my mother living alone, right? What is she going to do? What's going to happen? But I can live in the present 
And I could make beautiful options for her and say, hey, live with me or what do you want to do? And just, and, and just be as present as I can to help her through the situation of grieving, right? If I push myself into the past and worry about all the things that my mom and dad went through in the past, and if I throw myself into the future and worry about what could happen to her, and I wrote in my diary recently, I wrote, you know, worry doesn't exist. Worry is a, is a, is a basically a procrastination, right? You know something's there, take care of it, handle it. You won't worry about it, right? It's so I use the word concern now. I change my language. Uh, when I, I don't use the word want a lot, I use desire. Want usually lack, you know, leads to lack. Mm -hmm. I don't use the word need as much as I can. I use I can or I will, right. affirmational processes. I learned so much of my talking and my words were affecting my behavior, right? And now, like, everything seems to be swimmingly well for me. Like, if I want to achieve something, I get it. If I want to move somewhere, I want it. If there's a, a house that I really want to get into, I can do it. If I want to invest in real estate, because uh, and a little bit of it, too, is, is my dedication to God. I said, well, if there's this higher power being that can that's around and that's filling me with energy, then what do I have to fear? Like, there's just no fear. And if I'm only going to go back to the source from which I came, then death is just a transition, you know? And uh, if, honestly, for me to do this interview and just... Be able to feel that feeling, even though uh, the passing of my father on Monday night really is, you know, it's 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 uh, Wednesday night here. It's only been two days. It's it's been a a whirlwind of events in the last couple of days. But you know, yeah, it must be. Yeah, but you know what? I'm able to do this interview with you and not break down and talk about how much I love my father and not break down about where my mom could or could not be going because fear does not help. It's not going to do anything, right? It doesn't. It's really a fake right. emotion acting real. I say it all the time. Uh, and I wasn't even going to go there with this, but it just, you've opened my mind, man. And, and I, I, we always start these interviews and I never know, uh, what the person's going to spark in my mind, how I'm going to get inspired. And this is our first real time to really break bread and really break it down. Like we've never really had a zoom together off, yeah. off, off camera. You know, we've only kind of shared a space here and there. I've got a hint of who you are, but now I have like such a far better feeling. I'll be in Miami from the 16th to the 21st. Let's go to dinner, you know, let's hang out. Let's have some fun. Um, you can yeah, show me a little 100%, bit around. Yeah. I'll be staying on Collins Ave up in the beach, and, you know, uh, I'll come out maybe to Brookville, too. I love walking around there. And, uh, man, this has been a blessing. Uh, I just want to leave you with any last thoughts you want to say. Tell people where they can find your channel, where they can find your socials. And, man, thank you so much, like, for giving your insight, uh, your great educational uh, speaking. You know, you're very well-spoken. And just, yeah, just leave, leave people. Let people be where they can find you. And uh, with that being said, man, thank you so much for coming on and stay blessed, Evan. Oh, it's been an honor. Thank you so, so much for having me. Yeah, really appreciate it, man. If you guys want to check out the m one that I'm most on the most, youtube.com forward slash Evan Aldo. Twitter um, is at Real Evan Aldo. Those are the main two I'm on. I also stream on Twitch at the same time as YouTube. So either of those, some people like Twitch better, some people like YouTube better. And that's pretty much it for now. I do have an Instagram, Evan.Aldo. That's a little less active, but it's going to be mainly the YouTube channel and Twitter. Oh, I also have a Discord community, the Evan Aldo Discord community. So check that out too. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate it. Yo, thank you so much too. And everyone, that was the Price Report with your man, Evan Aldo and Sam Price. We'll be back next week with another beautiful interview, and I hope to see you there. God bless.